Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Please be seated. So good to have our friend, Brother Tim Gaddy, here with us, District Superintendent of Arkansas, Executive Presbyter of the Western District. And I would imagine that goes all the way from the east coast of Arkansas all the way to the west coast of California. So glad to have you here, Brother Gaddy. Brother Gaddy will be ministering to you today, uh, tomorrow and the next day. We appreciate him coming and being with us and being our WEC rep for our business meetings. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Brother Gaddy. I have someone that I would like to honor tonight. Someone that has been known for a long time is Brother Alaska. I've been to a lot of meetings with him. We have been fishing at times. We've done a lot of things together. We've worked through a lot of problems together. But he is celebrating right now 60 years of ministry. Would you stand up, Brother Blackshear? I want everybody to see you. <laughs> Folks, this is a great man. A great man. I'm sure that he's not always been right 100% of the time. But another thing I am sure of is his commitment to the Alaska Yukon District for the kingdom of God. He's given his life for it. Thank you, Brother Blackshear. <clears throat> Youth Week. I believe that two years ago, we'd be seated, two years ago, was the last district conference that we had. And I believe that at that time, the highest number registered for the youth camp was 150 or 150 something. This year, as I understand it, there were 178 young people registered for youth camp. Were you able to notice anything while we were worshiping and singing and all of that? Did you notice how many young people were at the altar and up front? Wow! I think there were a hundred young people up here. And almost every one of them under 20 years of age. If the Lord tarries, mom and dad, I don't think we have to worry about the kingdom of God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. <laughs> One more thing. With all of these young people down there, I saw an old man with a, just had a double hip plant, double hip replant or installed <laughs> right down here in the middle of all of it, Brother Farmer. I haven't had any hip replacements and I don't think I can do what he did. Wow. Finally, family camp. Didn't we miss it last year? I, you'll have to pardon me, but I'm having trouble getting over the number of people that are here tonight in this service. What an amazing crowd tonight. Do you know that some people came from a thousand miles away. Some people, God making special arrangements, had to cross the Canadian border to get here. Getting back home may be a problem, but he got here. They got here. Wow. I wonder how many people have you had to get on an airplane to get here? How many? Would you raise your hand? How many people spent a thousand dollars to get here? There's still some out there, still out there, you know. I want to say thank you. Thank you for making this district what it is.
Now you think I'm trying to flatter you, but I'm not. As far as I'm concerned, you are the greatest people in the world. This is the most wonderful family on the planet. I am as sincere as anyone can be. What a wonderful people to love and for them to return that love. This cannot be bought anywhere else in the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. Camp meeting 2021. I have come to uh, call this opportunity that I have, the first first evening meeting of camp meeting. Uh, I, I, I don't just pick out a sermon. It's much more important to me and all of us than that. I call this my state of the church address. I feel a responsibility to bring us together by letting us know where we are, what's happened in our churches, what's drawn us together. I feel it's important to know that for you to know that we have a vision. We're trying to go somewhere. Good church is wonderful, but good church is only a byproduct of what we're trying to accomplish. Brother Jack Cunningham, our evening speakers, be the rest of the service. I heard him say one time in talking to pastors, and he said, if you're going to have church growth, the important thing is you must have good church. Good church is just not making a lot of noise. Good church is when everybody goes home, even your visitors that have been there for the first time, and say, wasn't that wonderful? We in the Alaska Yukon District have a vision. We are trying to evangelize Alaska and the Yukon Territory and everybody else we can get involved. I feel like God is going to say something to us tonight. I'm a little insecure about my part, but I'm very confident that God is able to speak to us and help us in our God-given vision to where we want to go. Please be seated. Music stop, please. In John chapter 4, the woman at the well meets Jesus. And I'm preaching to the church tonight. You know where we are. Chapter 4, verse 28. And the woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city, and saith to the men, Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ Then they went out of the city and came unto him. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that you know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him aught to eat? Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me to finish his work. Verse 35, Say ye not, There are yet four months, and then cometh the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are ready to harvest. My title tonight, Lifted Eyes. Lifted Eyes. On January 21st, 2020, the first COVID-19 case in the United States was diagnosed in the state of Washington. For the most part, we had no idea what was to beset us. One writer wrote, The past year has been a tough one all around. Everyone has experienced the challenges of the pandemic in their own way. The hardships have been worse for some than others, but it is safe to say that we've all been affected. And I believe that every one of us can say amen to that. We have all been affected. In one way or another, whether you have ever had COVID or not, we have all been affected. For many of us, church services were canceled because of state or medical restrictions. Many of our churches experienced casualties, spiritual and physical. When services resumed, many were afraid to return to church because of what I call the fear factor. 
afraid of catching the virus and afraid of passing it on to family and fearing the worst, even death. Vision and future plans were at best put on hold. But as always for the church, crisis brings opportunity. Many of our churches are streaming and one church in the Alaska Yukon District is broadcasting their services through their own radio station. Brother Bradbury wrote me a letter. He says, certainly this has been a challenging year. However, new avenues have opened up for evangelism, avenues that were available all along, but we had never reutilized. When focused to shut down, we began using our radio station by broadcasting from the radio. Also, we began using the United, the Bethel United Pentecostal Church Facebook Live page. While we locked down, we provided ministry for others who are living at a distance from Bethel. We now have regular listeners in Alakanuk and Tun to Tuliak. They not only tune in to our services, pastors, you'll love this, but they have now become contributors through tithing. To minister to Tuxuk Bay, Brother Lou developed a system whereby people call a given number and he broadcasts to them weekly from his computer. They, in turn call others on their phones, and create a telephone tree. As a result, many are being taught the truth. Listen to this. I think that's something to applaud. I really do. These are brand new doors of evangelism. I'm telling you, God knows what to do with the crisis. In Homer, Pastor Phil Murphy, Homer UPC, he says, In Homer, we've had ups and downs through this period of the pandemic. However, we have about 160 to 180 followers on Facebook. Our members have increased through visitors. This is an outreach we've never used before, and it's explosive. It's explosive. Can you imagine in Homer now all of a sudden 160 to 180 people are exposed to the church? Just to give you a short list of some of the really neat things that have been happening in our district. Do you have the slide for the screens back here? Do you or don't you? <laughs> well, you're going to see a picture of a baptism, all right? Yeah. Brother Gaddy, look at that. That's how we get to church in Alaska. I want to talk to you for just a minute about this picture. Some time ago, Brother Bradbury and his church and Brother Tad Lindley and others have been going to Queethlock. And they built a building there. And they started having church after they finished the building, but something happened called COVID. And uh, we were told that no one was allowed to come into the village or go out of the village and that armed guards were placed to the entrances. They said roads, but there are no roads there. Armed guards were put, posted there to keep anyone and everyone out. But something happened, and just recently, they've been able to go, and this is the very first baptism in Queethluck, Alaska. <laughs> Sister Ciara Daniels, and I understand she's here, and she got the Holy Ghost this last week. Oh, yeah! New pastor in Whitehorse, Cole, brother, brother Colvin, he tells us that during this pandemic, he baptized six people. That's revival. That's revival. 
Pastor Mendenhall, brand new church in Saldotna. Well, different brand new building anyhow. Pentecostals of Saldotna during this pandemic, 10 baptized, six people received the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Pastor Springer, Eastgate UPC, 14 baptized, seven received the Holy Ghost. And we couldn't even go to church half the time. You're going to love this one. Pastor Miller in Sitka, Alaska. 14 baptized, 18 received the Holy Ghost. Our pastors have baptized during this pandemic 156 people. And under their ministry, 102 have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, the Lord knows what to do in a crisis. Some people blame the devil for it, but I'm not so sure that he's responsible for it. God knows how to get something out of us, what he wants to do. And I have to mention this. During this pandemic, the Alaska Yukon District continues giving record offerings toward funding ministries and building churches. That's you and me. Pardon me, but I'm proud of that. I'm proud of that. Not arrogantly, but I am so thankfully proud of that. God is good. The last two years, the Alaska Yukon District has been number one in the nation for North American mission offerings. Hey, listen, you beat out all the districts in Texas put together. You beat out the Louisiana district. I mean, they must have a thousand churches. They have one on every corner and sometimes two of them. In this last year, this year of the pandemic, be seated. I love to be able to say that. Sometimes I say it when no one's standing, just for encouragement. <laughs> this last year, the North American Missions Department offering was led by Pastor Jim Blackshear, and we gave, you and I gave, number one in the nation in Canada, number one, $417,205.38. cents. Yes, yes. We may be living in the corner of the world, but I'm telling you, you and I are ministering to the world. <laughs> Brother Blackshear not only led our district into this tremendous, miraculous giving, but Life Church in Anchorage, the church that he's pastored for, I believe, 27, 28 years now, was number one in the world with a $195,000 offering from their church. Life Church, we applaud you tonight. Yes. That's not the whole story. We give records for in every department, it seemed like. Youth department this year, we gave $42,000. Ladies' ministries, $48,994.77. Global missions, you gave $118,633.86. Total district giving through this pandemic, $634,000. In Fairbanks, we sing a song. You can be seated. Thank you, young people, for doing that. You can stand up anytime you want to. Just let me say, be seated, all right? 
In Fairbanks, we sing a song. It's called, I See a Victory. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. My God will never fail. And it goes on. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. On the wall of the vestibule of the sanctuary UPC in Fairbanks is a framed vision statement. It reads, the sanctuary UPC vision. Our vision is to bring the uncommitted into a devoted life of service to God by leading them into the new birth experience and to an active involvement in a ministry of the kingdom. I believe every person that comes into the kingdom has a ministry. It may not be a pulpit ministry. It may not be a singing ministry. It may be a ministry that you're able to feel the hurt of other people and you go to minister to them. But every person has a ministry. There are no room for bleacher setters. Please don't let the devil lull anybody. I don't care how young or how old you are into just waiting out your time for the rapture or for death. But God has a ministry for everyone. We had a little lady come in the church in Fairbanks. I saw her out in her backyard one day when I was mowing the lawn. I just set the mower off, went over and started talking to her, invited her to church. I think she's been to service every time since then. She's a little old lady, and, and she's a little bit overweight, and she can hardly get around, and she has heart problems. But she told me, she said, I just got to do something. She said, surely there's something I can do in this church. i just got to do something. Oh, that would to God that every one of us would feel like, i just got to do something. i just got to do something. <laughs> Hallelujah. My first year as district superintendent, it was 14 years ago that I was placed in this office. I was given a year, or I took a year after that to pray for a vision for our district. I came out of that prayer meeting with a drive to help our churches and ministers to grow, to grow in numbers and to grow in maturity. It came to me like that. The vision could be simple because we all know what we want to do. We don't want to stay the same. We don't want to be stagnant. But we want to grow into the kingdom of God. And I came out of that with a vision. To accomplish this, I would provide our pastors with what I called the three M's of evangelism. Methods, means, and motivation. So for the last 13 years... We have done our best to provide these things for our pastors, and obviously it is working. We wanted to provide methods to our pastors. A lot of times we want to do something, but we don't know what to do. We wanted to provide ideas and programs that have been successful in growing churches and growing people, such as home Bible studies, for example, and outreach. We wanted to provide means through the various departments of our district. We have put furnaces in churches and in homes, and we have put roofs on churches, and we've picked up this and we've picked up that. We've made it possible for a church to continue on when there were no other means available. We have provided many of our churches with the means that they need for revivals, for people to come and help them in their church and to do what we can. We are serious about this. We're providing many methods and we are providing means for them and motivation. I feel like that motivation may just be the most important factor of all of it because you got to have the want to or you'll never do it. And so for all of these years in the beginning, I asked our district board in the past, I've been on the board for I don't know how many years, 
But I can remember asking, and the, the district board would be the one to choose our speakers that would come for our camp meeting, for our conferences, our ministers and wives retreat, and so forth. I asked them for the permission to be able to pick out who I wanted to come as speakers for our camp meeting, our major meetings. And they, maybe reluctantly, but they did that at my request. And since that time, we simply don't ask someone to come because they can shuck the corn. We're not interested in just great preaching. We've got lots of, we've got some of the best preaching in the world. And I mean that. But I wanted to pray about it. I wanted to seek out. I wanted to find people that could come and get behind the pulpit and teach us how and what and motivate us to do it from the bottom of our feet to the top of our head. And God has helped us do that in many ways. Now, now we have SGI, Strategic Growth Initiative a vision for our church worldwide. Our national CSGI director, Brother Cunningham, will be ministering to us here in each of our evening services, and we have scheduled, rescheduled over the original schedule, a time when they can talk to our pastors. Brother Sistrunk will be here, North American Missions Director, where he can speak to our pastors about this vision. And what we're trying to do is if there's anyone that has not picked up the vision, it's not just the pastors, but everyone, if there's anyone that has not picked up the vision, that we would be able to say, I want to be part of that and I am going to do something about it. I want to be part of that and I'm going to do something about it. The purpose of the United Pentecostal Church, and this comes from the UPCI manual vision statement, the purpose of the United Pentecostal Church International is to carry the whole gospel to the whole world, by the whole church, to establish an effective organized effort to encourage the opening and establishing of new works, to evangelize the world by every means possible, and to produce and maintain a clean ministry and fellowship. The whole gospel to the whole world motto from the research that I've done through headquarters first appeared in the 1947 manual of the UPCI. The additional words by the whole church were added by the 2004 General Conference. My challenge to you, my brother, is will you put yourself into this equation Will you include yourself in the whole church? Can you imagine? Can you imagine what it would be like if every one of us had a burden to invade Sterling, Alaska and touch this city? I'm telling you, it would be an unstoppable force. An unstoppable force. I am hoping today that you can include yourself into this vision. And like in an upper room, they were all with one mind and one accord. We were of the same spirit. We're going the same direction. And we've got the same motivation and zeal. I believe that God has a great work in Alaska and the Yukon Territory of Canada. My text, John chapter 4. Verse 35, lift up your eyes, look on the fields, for they are white, all ready to harvest. Notice, if you will, this is Jesus talking to his disciples. And out of the blue, it seems like he says, lift up your eyes. As I begin to think about that, I realize that the Bible is not all happy times. There were times when it was difficult following Jesus. There were more people that rejected their offering than accepted it. There were families to be taken care of of the disciples. They were often away on long trips. 
I would imagine they often slept on the ground, maybe in caves and different places. But the point is that at this point when Jesus was talking to them, he saw something in them. Maybe he saw that they were getting tired. Maybe he saw that they were getting discouraged. And all of a sudden he says, lift up your eyes and look on the fields for they are white. I can't remember the details of this little story. It was either when I was in the hospital visiting someone or I was the patient. I don't remember. It was a long time ago. But I do remember the words that were spoken. If you will, picture in your mind someone that's just had surgery. The nurse has that person by the arm. And you know how it is. They get you up and they start walking you, you know. And I was walking along with them, just visiting the, the patient, you know. And, and as the person kept getting lower and lower to the ground, I do remember this. It stayed with me because there's a spiritual uh, meaning from or translation from this, so to speak. But the nurse said to the person, the patient, she said, quit looking down. And I said, why? And she said, because we tend to go where we're looking. <laughs> Friend, keep this in mind. The apostle Peter did really well on water until he started looking down. <laughs> Jesus is saying to you and I, quit looking at your problems. Come on now, quit looking at how bad it is. Get your eyes off of the ground and start looking up. We've got a responsibility. We've got a purpose. We are on a mission, if you will. Albert Einstein once said, darkness only exists by the absence of light. In my opinion, this is purely a secular statement. Associated with Einstein, you would call it a scientific statement, but it's not necessarily so. It's just simply from his perspective. But from a spiritual perspective, darkness, we know, does in fact exist. But the point is that the light that is in us is the only thing that breaks the darkness. It is not only the only thing that will break the darkness, but it will, when you lift the light up, the darkness has to flee. You having a struggle in your home or something with bad things going around you, just close your eyes and say, Jesus. Quit looking at all the distractions. Get your eyes on the Lord. An old evangelist by the name of Smith Wigglesworth once said one time he wrote in his book, he said he heard something in the middle of the night in the hotel room and he woke up. He turned the light on and he looked and he said at the foot of his bed stood Satan. And when he looked at Satan, he said, oh, it's you. He turned the light out and went back to bed. Quit looking at problems. Start looking at what you can do. Start looking for opportunities. Start looking for doors that are open to you. We're in a pandemic that has paralyzed the world, but God has opened the door for us. I want to wind down here, but it may take a little bit. Crisis for the church always brings opportunity. Do you remember that what spread the gospel in the times of the disciples? What spread the gospel throughout the world? It was persecution. It forced the children of God to flee for their lives. But God knew that they weren't going to die. He said, I want the gospel to go over here. There's some people over here I want to talk to. COVID for the church brings opportunity. COVID has moved our churches beyond our four walls. COVID 
has moved the church into the most far-reaching outreach in the history of the church. Today, through multimedia, you and I in the Alaska Yukon District can reach the world. Someone asked for some of my tapes one time, and they said, we'd like, we have a, a shortwave radio, and we would like to play those and send those out. Would that be all right? I said, sure, no problem. A month later, he called me, and he said, from 67 countries, people have listened to these tapes. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about what God can do with a church. And I will close with this. The Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary and a miracle was born. We all believe that the Bible is full of pictures. I believe that this is a beautiful picture, Mary representing a picture of the church. Just as Mary, when she was overshadowed by the Holy Ghost, a miracle was born. Please hear me today. We are going to continue to do all the programs. We're going to continue to do all the plans. We're going to work like we've never worked before. But hear me today. If we can get to the place that the church is overshadowed by the Holy Ghost. We are going to see the miraculous happen. You can do a great deal. You can do a great deal through planning and work, and we're going to do that. But it will be nothing but disappointing until the church can become overshadowed with the Holy Ghost. Would you stand with me right now? Would you lift up your fans and reach out to the Lord and say, Lord, let the Holy Ghost fall on us. Lord, overshadow your church with your spirit, God. Give us a miracle. Give us deliverance, oh God. We have the greatest altar services at our camp meetings that I've ever seen or experienced anywhere. I'm going to ask all of you to gather in as far as you can here. I don't even care if you get up on the platform to allow more people. I'd like for every one of you to gather in, and I would like for us again to lift our hands, lift our voices, and say, God... Overshadow us with the Holy Ghost. Put that miracle within your church, God. It's your work, Lord. It's your kingdom. It's your world. We've got the methods. We've got the means. God has opened a door for the church to touch the entire world in a way that has never, ever happened before. Whether you know how to operate a computer or not, it really doesn't matter because God has a place for you in this. We need people that are going to work. We need people that are going to pray. We need people that are going to stand in the gap. We need people that are going to make... Pastor, listen to me. You have struggled. It has been an uphill battle all the way. But what you and I need in our churches is an overshadowing of the Holy Ghost. There is no darkness that can stand in that light. Let's reach out to him right now. Right now, forget about everyone else around you. You are the only one in the building. Wherever you are, you are the only one in the building. And say, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, overshadow me. Oh, Holy Ghost, manifest yourself to me, Lord. God, help us to plug in to where the real power is. Oh, God will bless your efforts. God will bless those tracks that you pass out. God will bless those phone calls that you make. But oh, there's something that can be accomplished through the anointing of the Holy Ghost that you and I cannot do by ourselves.
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Touch us, oh God. Touch us, oh God. Touch us, oh God. When the darkness falls, it won't Because the God I serve knows only how to try. Come on, friend, reach for it. Let's say somebody, somebody back here. Come on. He sees you. You're not near the front, but he sees you. He's reaching for you. He wants to do something in your life. Victory. I'm gonna see a victory. Yes. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna sing a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. That's it. That's it. That's it. There's power in That's the it. mighty name of Jesus. Right now, the Holy Ghost is putting a calling on your life. Right now, the Holy Ghost is putting a special calling on your life. I'm not talking pulpit ministry. I'm not talking pastor evangelist. But what I am saying is there's a channel of the Holy Ghost coming from above that's touching someone right now because he has a plan for your life. He wants to do something special for you. Oh, come on, young person. You're not too young. You're not too young. Right now. Right now. He has a purpose for you.
enemy 